this is the first in a couple of tutorial videos where we explain how to uh, use Coax, um, which is a package that allows you to build your own uh, reinforcement learning agents um, in a modular way, so in, a, in an easy way. Um, so this first two videos, uh, we're not going to actually get into reinforcement learning just yet um, because it's, it's easiest to just build a bit of foundation. And the important foundation that we need is, uh, is, is that this package is built on top of JAX, uh, which is slightly different from TensorFlow and PyTorch, um, but not in a bad way, actually in a good way, because JAX is, uh, is, is much easier than all the other packages. Um, so uh, this will just be a quick um, 10 minutes to show you how to, uh, like how JAX works and how to sort of think about how JAX works. Um, and then in the, the next video after this, uh, I'll show you um, how Haiku works, which is a package that is built. Uh, so it, think of it as sort of the Keras for, uh, um, for JAX. Um, and uh, then we have enough of a foundation that, to build our own reinforcement learning agents. Um, so let's just uh, do a quick couple of minutes to, uh, to introduce JAX, uh, and then we can, uh, can build on top of that. Uh, so I thought it would be nice is just to take uh, ordinary supervised learning. So let's say uh, inputs and outputs. Um, and maybe we'll just do like a simple uh, machine learning one on one on one or hello world of machine learning, like uh, to just take linear regression, basically. Um, so we'll just import um, from uh, scikit-learn um, we'll take uh, the simple uh, uh, linear regression data set. Um, whoops. Um, so we'll just say make regression. Uh, let's look at the shape of the inputs. Um, yeah, so instead of taking 100 features, we'll just take uh, three features, like just to keep it, keep it simple. Um, so what does this look like? Uh, so the first 10 rows is basically just three dimensional vectors here. Um, um, so uh, again, the shape of this guy is, uh, is uh, so, so 100 data points of three features. Uh, and, and Y is just 100 uh, floats. And now, of course, what we need to do is because we do supervised learning, we need to do a train test split. Uh, so let's just do that real quick. Um, so I think that's in models, yes. Uh, train, no, uh, train test split, that's right. Um, so we've got X and X test. Uh, uppercase um, y and y test is the this guy acting on this. Um, so now instead of 100 rows, we'll have 75 because uh, we've we've given a couple of data points to our test set, which is 25. So that's what happens. Um, all right. Now that we have our data, we we are ready to do our uh, actual machine learning. Um, so we'll import JAX and uh, we'll also import NumPy from JAX. Um, let's import it as JNP and not just NP. It's, it's kind of the convention to make sure that you don't get confused where, like which NumPy you're talking about. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, if you need to import, uh, still install this, by the way, just go to the JAX documentation page. Uh, typically, like a pip install JAX will do the trick. Um, but if you want a version that is specific to your CUDA uh, version on your machine, um, then it's probably a good idea to have a look at uh, how to do it from there. It's basically, they've already have pre-built versions, but you just have to download it from a specific uh, location. It's not, it's not complicated, but anyway, um, so, uh, so we'll start with, uh, with our parameters, our, our model parameters or our weights. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to say, um, we didn't need to initialize uh, the weights. Uh, we're going to do linear regression, so we just need weights and, uh, and a bias, an intercept. And uh, so the shape of this thing is just the shape of the input, uh, but without the um, batch dimension, obviously. Um, our intercept um, is, is just, it's just a float, uh, that's it. So let's look 
what that looks like. Uh, did I screw up somehow? Zeros. Um, so we've just got a bunch of, so three zeros here and, and a single one here. Um, and then the next step is to define uh, what a forward pass is. So we'll just do a forward pass uh, where we take in our parameters and our inputs. Um, and then what we return is uh, just a dot product um, whoops, uh, of the x into uh, the weights, w, uh, and then we add to them uh, the bias term, the intercept. So let's just see, let's just double check whether that worked all right. Um, yeah, that looks all right. So it should be 75 long. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay. Um, and then the next step is to define our loss function. Uh, so the loss function takes, uh, again, the parameters as inputs, um, the inputs of the, uh, of the neural net, as well as the outputs. Um, and then what we'll do is uh, we'll say the, the error, the residual, is just whatever we predict minus the ground truth. Um, and then what we want to return uh, is actually the mean squared error. So the mean of the point y square of the error. So this is also known as the MSE. Um, so let's just double check whether we uh, whether this works. Um, uh, params uh, x and y looks all right. So that's just a floating point. It's quite a large number, so we we have some work to do. Um, and in fact, actually, let's let's uh, evaluate this on our test set. Still a large number. So um, yeah, okay. Um, so now uh, we are almost ready to start our optimization process, except that we don't really know how to take derivatives yet. And luckily, there is actually something really nice about uh, JAX, which is that the gradient um, is something that it just calculates for you. So we just take the grad of the loss function. And what it does, uh, so let's just show you what this thing is. Well, it's just a function, it's not, not that much to see, but um, so it takes the derivative with respect to the first uh, argument of this function, uh, this loss function. So it takes the, the derivative with respect to params. Um, now, um, if, we, if we look at this loss function, um, the, the what it returns is just a, a straight up float. So there's, there's nothing special about that. Um, but if we say uh, we take the gradient, um, then of course the structure that we expect to get in return, um, if you think about it for a second, is it has to be the same structure as the parameters themselves. Um, it lives in the same space as the parameters. Um, so, and indeed that's exactly what we see. So the structure here is that we've got those uh, intercepts, the bias and the, and the weights. Um, okay, so now we are actually ready to, uh, to do the optimization. Actually, one, one small uh, side, uh, side note here is that, uh, oh, um, what's going on? Um, Okay, is that um, if we want to make our calculations faster, all we need to do is just uh, add the, the JIT decorator to our function, and that just speeds up everything. So it's really as simple, and it's it composes just as easily with uh, with the grad function here. So um, yeah, so so everything just works out exactly the same way. Um, so. Very, very easy to, uh, to make things fast, to speed things up in terms of uh, putting things on a GPU. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that's one. Now, uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, just do a bunch of uh, uh, updates. Um, whoops, my, uh, yep. Um, let's say uh, 50 iterations or so. Um, we'll first calculate, um, actually, let's just, Let's just reuse what we already wrote here. Uh, whoops. Um, tab. Um, so we have our loss. That's calculated on a test set. And let's print that loss. Um, and we have our gradients. 
obviously we don't want to calculate those on our test set so we'll just calculate that otherwise we'd be cheating um, and then we can update our uh, parameters uh, so let's say the w parameters by taking a small step uh, in the negative direction so descent uh, of the gradients with respect to w now we can do the same thing for uh, the intercept as well um, and now we're at a point where I think we can just run it and see if it converges. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, so, so that's nice. Now, one thing that, that isn't very pretty about this is this last little bit here. And especially if you can imagine if you've got a whole bunch of different uh, parameters, um, you may want to, uh, you don't really want to sort of go, dig into this uh, dictionary too much. Uh, especially if you if you've got multiple uh, layers in here so uh, yeah so what you can do um, is you can use so so what we'll do is we'll use uh, a utility that uh, that comes with Jax um, and so we'll take the uh, oops so Jax has this notion of pie trees and pie trees are basically, I mean, think of them as, as these dictionaries. There are things that have uh, some sort of array as leaf nodes, um, but then you can have maybe like tuples or dictionaries or stuff that has uh, as, as ultimately values uh, arrays. That may sound a bit vague, but, um, but let's, let's, just, let's just implement this and maybe it become a bit clearer. Um, so this multi-map, um, is a function, so we'll just put a function in here that uh, maps onto um, uh, so that takes in parameters and gradients and the, the, uh, the function here, so let's just define a lambda um, it acts on the leaves of those trees, of those, those pie trees, uh, so dictionaries. So in this case, it acts on just the values of the dictionary and not the keys of the dictionary. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say for each leaf of uh, each parameter leaf, we want to uh, uh, subtract a small uh, step in the direction of the gradient. And this does our gradient step for us. Um, so this is a slightly cleaner way and of course like in this case it didn't maybe didn't really look all that much cleaner but uh, if this becomes a very very complicated uh, thing uh, it's actually very nice to just have a clean way of, uh, of sort of uh, putting all of that uh, sort of under the rug <laughs> um, right so uh, uh, this, this was sort of a, a quick crash course in, uh, in Jax. In the next video, we'll show um, how to use, how to sort of make this a little bit simpler in terms of uh, uh, using a haiku as your function approximator and also showing sort of how nice and modular that is. Um, right, see you in the next video.